Yes, you can start, Hilda. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have come here today to hear your word, obey your word, and apply your word. The topic that we have chosen today is a continuation of last time, serving the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul. Lord, we have all come here for a purpose on this earth. And our purpose is not to just do what the world asks us or just our physical responsibilities. If we do that, we'll get lost in this race. We have a purpose and our purpose is to accomplish the work that you have given each one of us, each based on, their, on our own talents. As today's praise and worship song was, to know you, Lord, and to know your love. And the most important part which I like is, knowing you, Lord, you are the best part. And if you are the best part, serving you will be very easy because you are the best part of our life. Lord, as we listen to your word and understand your word through the Holy Spirit, help us to go and do your work for your kingdom, Lord. And help us in return of doing this to experience this peace, the serenity that we know that we have someone who's looking for us, who's looking out for us. Lord, I touch everybody's mind and heart through your power of your Holy Spirit. Bless this beautiful family who has this session every day at 4 p.m. in India time. Bless each one of us and our families and all those who later join, listen to this call and experience this peace and serenity, what you want us to experience and share with others and tell others the, the way, the truth and the life and to experience peace is only through Jesus Christ. I praise you, Lord. I adore you. I glorify you. I worship you. I bless you. I thank you for everything you have done for us and for all things that you are ready and you have already planned to do for us. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God, uh, everyone. Praise so God. to praise God. So today's session, before we go to serving the Lord with all your heart, mind and soul, the other points that I had to discuss, let's refresh what I spoke last time. Because I know with all the topics that we had this week, uh, just as a refresher, so that you all will know what we discussed and align your thought process. So serving the Lord with all your heart, mind and soul, irrespective of what your topics, what topics we take, it should be a primary purpose. And that reason why it is primary purpose, because even though in the Old Testament, Moses gave 10 commandments, Jesus simplified and gave two commandments. One is loving God with all your heart, mind and soul. When you are loving God, whatever God asks us to do, we have to do it. And second is loving your neighbors. If you do it for your neighbors, it's not a physical neighbor, anyone, anyone who is in need and you can help. That's an opportunity he has carved for us. You are doing it for Christ. So, don't think about the person, what, who you are doing. Maybe the person, you know that person, and the person might be one of the toughest person that you had interacted in your life. But at this situation, the person is humbled down. If he or she approaches, if they don't even approach you. You can see for yourself what situation they are. You can go and reach out to that person. 
don't think you're intruding into that person's life, but you know that person is in a very tough situation. Step in, share the word of God, see what you can do. Everything when you're helping anyone, first pray to God. Don't do it with your own physical sense. Don't do with your emotional, your emotions. If you do with your emotions and with your physical, just because you got a need, your reaction to help someone, that does not work. Anytime you do anything, anything, even the simplest of thing, pray to God, talk to God, and ask God, Lord, is that what you want me to do? And, you know, if God doesn't want you to do, there'll be some reason he will he will block it. You ask him to block it from you. Suppose there's something that you are really excited to do, but you have not got the approval from the high command. Don't jump into it. Just ask God, if you want me to do, you'll clear the path. This week we learned about Psalm 25.4. Lord, teach me your ways and show me your path. Ask him to teach his ways to us and show his path. He will show the path of whom he will put in people that he knows that what is the best for me to, for you to do. Here we have, go ahead, sister. So, show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Praise God. You know, if you follow this, before you do any work, even if it is the work of the ministry at the church, consult with God. I started using Psalm 25.4, show me your ways, Lord, and teach, uh, teach me your ways, Lord, and show me your path. Even if it is something to do with the church, still consult the Lord. Consult the Lord, Lord, is this what you want me to do? Because you don't know some things can be overwhelming. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe you're not cut to do that. It might be so overwhelming and tiring. So just because you're not going to get a brownie point or you're not going to get... Don't think that you're doing because you are going to get blessings. Spiritual blessing has already promised in Ephesians 1, 3. 1, 2, 3. We all know that. It's You are doing it because you are commissioned to do it. So... Going back to what we learned was Joshua said, serving the Lord, for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. When he spoke to the Israelites, what they want to do. So that should be our primary statement in our head that we need to do it every time now and then. Let everybody do what they want. But me and my household will serve the Lord. You know, I, I remember just now the Holy Spirit reminds me of this scripture. A sister opened a job 3611. Okay, go to Joshua 2415. If you want to, we can go to 2415 first and we can read it out. Okay, just a minute. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We all know the story of how the Israelites fled Egypt 
Abba Father, help them to cross the Red Sea. It took 40 years because God was training them. Remember one thing. If there is anything that you are praying and your prayers you feel are not getting answered, it's because God is trying to train you. Because if you are given easily anything, simple example, a child at Christmas, the parents will look and the, the child would say, oh, he has got a toy aer aeroplane. I need a toy aeroplane. So the parents will bring a toy aeroplane for the child. After 15, 20 minutes, the toy aeroplane is thrown and the child is crying again and nagging the parents. The parents don't know what to do. The child says, I need something else. They bring it, something else. So it just goes on. The child is unhappy. The parents are unha unhappy. But if the parents work with the child and plan that this aeroplane, you can't get it so immediately. There are other things in between I can bring which will help you. And that way you will learn. That will make the child eager to learn and will help the child, train the child and be ready because the promise that parent made, they will get the, the aeroplane, but they have not given a time, time frame. So the child will be eager for it. In between, they are giving other things, small, small tasks they are giving the child and they are rewarding the child with small, small ways. And the child is happy, parents are happy. That's the same thing what our Lord is, did for the Israelites. He never gave them everything at one go because he knew if he gives them, things will become really bad. He knew that. So he gave, started giving them small, small stars, tasks and was rewarding them with manna from heaven, quail, but they were unhappy. Finally, just to cut this uh, story short, after Moses, Joshua took over. When Joshua took over, he's, he, he started with, and that's what I said, anytime you do anything, always do with a prayer. Don't do it without the prayer. Always put God first in your life. Whether it is marriage, whether it is finance, whether it is um, emotions, anything, put God in the center, put Jesus in the center of it. So that way, the way I do it, I put Jesus in the center that you share in my joys, you share in my sufferings. Because I know that, that I put Jesus in the center, I will always be able to, for my sufferings, he's going to take half of my sufferings out. And I'll have him to comfort me in my joy. I'll have him to share with him. So put Jesus as the center. So coming back when I said, always serve God as a priority. And I was saying that I, the Holy Spirit reminded me of Job 36, 11. So I'll show you what Job has said in his, in his story. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So what Job used to do, and actually I followed that. You know, Job used to pray for his friends. He used to, Job used to go and serve um, uh others he used to others means who God had commissioned him to do he would serve the Lord and he clearly says that if you obey the Lord and serve him you know you will spend you will in other words you will be enjoying your salvation what the Lord has earned it so this was so simplified when I was um, listening to the word of God and uh, reading through the Bible, I really liked it because this is this is the basis of our life. It basis of our life, when I first started before the word of God, 
I used to think basis of life is religion, going to church, doing some doing rosaries and novena. That's the basis of life. Yeah, that's part of it. But that does not substitute knowing the Bible. You just can't keep the Bible on the uh, book stand and get cobwebs. You are not giving respect to God. Jesus said even to the lady who came to her uh, to him when she heard him speaking that. Blessed are the breast who has fed uh, this, uh, uh, fed him, and blessed is the mother. But what did Jesus say? Blessed are those who uh, listen to the word and obey it. That day, when I was reading through the Bible, in the Bible, and got this this word, and I don't remember exactly that uh, scripture. When I heard that, I said, "This is what the Lord has said." Blessed are those who listen to the word of God and obey it. I took that as my primary objective. This is my objective is listen to the word of God and obey it means do a doer, be a doer of the word of God and serve him. And then you will enjoy your salvation. Whatever the devil who is prowling around will come to trouble you, you will be able to get away from it because you will know through using the word of God how to get the devil out and enjoy your salvation. Praise God. Anyone has any questions, anything right now? Brother Vincent, you want to say anything? Or Sister Melanie? Praise God, Hilda. Praise Jesus. You know, what you said is so true. That serving the Lord, loving the Lord, is doing what He wants us to do. Obeying His commands. So, we cannot say that we love God and we fail to follow His word. And how do we know that we are really following His word? Is when we are growing in intimacy with Him and we are doing what His word says. You know, I was just reading a reflection on the time when Jesus said, talked about the yoke. He said, come to me, all those who are tired and overburdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek, meek and humble of heart. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So many a time we want to serve, we want to do so many things for the Lord without yoking ourselves to Christ, without yoking ourselves to his word, without spending time in intimacy with him and following his word. And that is why what happens is our service becomes burdensome. Our service becomes, you know, something that we are putting our own self-effort and we can often get burnt out. Because we have not yoked ourselves to Jesus. We are not doing what his word says. We are not following his commands by spending time with him, intimacy with him, not growing in his word. But when we yoke ourselves to the Lord and first make his word our first priority, spending time, and then go out and give that word or serve others. It is Christ in us that is serving. And then our burden is going to be light. That's what Jesus said. Because many times we want to carry the burden of others. You know, when we do ministry work, we think that we are carrying the burden of others. We want to change everybody. We want to, we want to see changes in them. We want to change the world. But you know what? We should first change ourselves by yoking ourselves to Jesus. Become equipped with that word inside of us. Be doers of that word. And then when we go out and serve others, truly, it will not be burdensome. Our burden will be light. That is what Jesus meant when he said, yoke yourself to me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For my meek and humble of heart. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's yeah. so true. What Sister Melanie said. When we are doing any work, reaching out to people, start it with a prayer. Tell the Lord, if I know it will be burdensome, 
I'll be overburdened if I continue doing this. I know for some time when I went out reaching out to people, at one point of time, I couldn't handle it. It became overwhelming for me, exhausting for me. The people will not realize it. And you can't make people realize it because everybody is in the world. You need to talk to the Lord and explain to the Lord, Lord, I can't handle this. You help me how to come out of it. And God did help me come out of it and resolved it for me. It helped me. It helped the people. Because God is always, when he introduces people in your life to help, right? He doesn't do it. He's not expecting you to do it on his own. He's expecting you to work with him in partnership. And I have seen whenever I work with the Lord in partnership with him to help someone, anything, anything and everything, it definitely, uh, whatever is being asked for me to do to help that person, it works out. But it becomes exhausting in the journey, if you don't do it through a prayer, if you do it on your own and you feel you are doing it on your own, you don't know that he is actually solving the problem for you. He is bringing his angels to help you. It has not come by your work. Nothing comes by your work. During the journey, if you feel, oh, I did it. I must be so powerful. And you get out of it, to get out of it, you'll be more in a problem. So always, every time, start with a prayer. In Keep thanking the Lord for His grace. And ask the Lord, help me to come out of it now that you have helped me to um, be your, to, um, to bring Christ to this person. Now help me to go and do your next job. Don't get involved in the worldly things. Do what he has commissioned for you. So last time we learned about serving in Psalm 100.2, we said, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. So then we spoke about the various approaches. One, we spoke about through prayer and through the word of God. And that's what I was just saying. Don't limit yourself to religious things. Yeah, continue whatever religious thing. If the religious things uh, make you feel happy, go and do it. But don't do it without the word of God. Make the Bible an integral part of your life. Once you make the Bible, the scriptures, spending time with the Bible, the word of God, an integral part of your life, God will lead you to show you what some of the other things you need to do and you don't need to do. I'm speaking for myself. You know, once I started spending time with the Bible, the word of God, I started realizing what other things I don't need to do. And then slowly, I stopped doing those things because I started getting enlightened. And as the, previous, the second Praise and worship song was, the best part of life is knowing Jesus. So, you know Jesus only through the word of God. So, as you spend time with the word of God, you start realizing the peace and the happiness that you experience. You will realize what needs to be done. But prayer is an integral part, the most important part of serving Lord. If you don't have that one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord, and he knows you and you know him, you can't go and do work for others because that working for others only comes through him. So let's go to Jeremiah 33, colon 3, 33, 3. Hilda, what did you say? I lost you there. Jeremiah 33. In 33, it is the verse 3. Yes, got it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.
call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knows not. Praise God. So, our father has told the prophet Jeremiah, you call me and I'll, sub, and I'll answer thee. When he says, show great and mighty thing which thou do not know. This says is, this tells me that, you know, when you reach out to the Lord and you work with him, he'll show you things beyond your comprehension. That's Ephesians 3.20. You know, he will help you to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ask or imagine. But you need to do it by working through him. His word never fails. And that's what we see in... Yes, sister, you can read that. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Praise God. We have the same spirit that brought the resurrection of life in Jesus dwells in us. Romans 8, 11. You pray to God, you call to him, he'll answer and Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Praise God. When you're calling to him, you have your comforter within you. You call him, yet the Holy Spirit will help you. And you know, he'll answer us. And I showed you all in the Old Testament, showed us in the New Testament, He'll do much more. Your comprehension, you can't even think of it, what he can do. But you have to do, and when you do it, glorify God, praise him, give him the credit. Never take the credit for you. Never take the credit for yourself. You take the credit for yourself or you dismiss the work that the Lord has done. Believe me, things will not work from then onwards in your life because Unless you go back to Christ and ask his mercy. Ask, repent and tell him, I did not realize it. I know of certain people and I felt so bad. They, the Lord answered their prayers. But they dismissed it. And then things did not work. I just told them, told this person, repent. Repent and ask repentance from the Lord. When you ask, repent, because we are all humans. We are weak, right? We, we definitely will make mistakes. Unless we know the Lord, we will make mistakes. Repent and tell the Lord, I did not realize it. Because he is a loving and a faithful God. He wants us to come back. He will not keep an account of our bad things. But we need to repent and talk to him. And ask his forgiveness. Praise God. You know, once you build that eternal relationship with the Lord, the Holy Spirit will start guiding you and telling you when, what to do. And even when someone is in the wrong and someone is bothering you, the Holy Spirit will not want you to confront with people and lead an unhappy life. Will tell you what to do how to handle the situation. He wants you, the Holy Spirit is a person, he wants you to be happy. He will guide you, but you need to go and direct him, ask his direction. Praise God. So that was prayer, through prayer, once you experience God, he's going to help you along the way. The second thing is in giving. Now we learn through prayer. The next is in giving. Everything that we have comes from God. We are stewards of his resources. Whether it's our talent, if we are good in singing, then share your talent, go and participate, be a part of the choir. Good in playing a musical instrument, see if you can play the musical instrument if time permits and based on your situation. There's something everybody God has given as a talent. 
I always wanted to sing in the choir, but uh, it never excited me. I maybe God knew that maybe there are better singers than me. I could sing to be better sitting in the pew than going and sitting in the choir. But honestly, I never in my life thought I would be here today sharing the word with others. I started experiencing peace and happiness as I started getting into the weeds going through the Bible, learning scriptures, some of the things what I'm talking today, I was not even prepared for it. But the Holy Spirit reminds based on all what I have been spending my day-to-day -day time. And I started realizing this ministry, where I get an opportunity to share the word, listen to the word, which others say, listen to people's testimonies, is more rewarding for me gives me peace and helps me to reach out to people, share the word and win souls for his kingdom. So that is giving. Giving doesn't just mean money. Giving means sharing something with others, whether it's your talent, whether it's your time, whether it's your money, whether your resources. If you can be there to help others, go and do it. God will give you opportunities. Last time I spoke this Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 15.10. I love that uh, scripture. It's a very powerful scripture. Sister, you want to bring it up? Thou shalt surely give him and thine heart shall not be grieved when thou givest unto him. Because that for this thing, the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy works and in all that thou puts thy hand to. Praise God. You can see from this word of God is the simplified one that I read from my Bible is be sure to give them without any hesitation. When you do this, the Lord, your God, will bless you in everything you work for and set out to do. Don't wait for a Christmas or an Easter. A Christmas or an Easter or a special event to give. If there is any time you can help someone, go out and give there shouldn't be a particular day that you need to keep. Like in the past, I'm speaking from myself. I would think birthdays or an event is the time to give. But now if when the Lord tells you to give, go and give. Give me a second look. So go and give because if you hear the voice telling within you and it is reminding you many times, that means it is being told to you to help someone. Praise God. And you will be blessed in everything you work for and set out to do. That is the scripture. Blessing could be anything, but most importantly, peace. The peace that you get with little is more than you have a lot, but you can't, you don't have peace. So the blessings that you get is one that you need to be more concerned for. So in giving Romans 12, let's go to Romans 12, verse 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Praise God. So, again, this is a combination of prayer and giving. As you give your time, as you give your resources, rejoice in hope. You're helping someone. Be patient. As you work through a particular situation in your life, 
always think in your mind remember the story of the israelites it shouldn't be oh lord will take 40 years no he he might take just a couple of days or might take couple of months but you are working through it and when you know the lord is working through it you will be rejoicing but continue always in prayer praise god so the sec- so the first was prayer as part of serving the second was giving the third that today will be the new topic through faith so faith is the foundation of the christian life we have a good evidence to trust that what we believe is true and it's a very truth that is set us free he has given us all of us the same measure of faith but as individuals we have to purposefully put in the work to increase this measure of faith so when we are talking about serving god it is through faith how do we do it so basically we study about faith by reading the word of god first i'll talk about those various things what i listed then we'll go through scriptures okay second is by confessing the word of god third is meditating the word of god fourth is speak in faith to situations in your life fifth is interact with believers and sixth point i put is act in faith always act in faith so when we are serving god we do it only through faith as i started initially and i i was actually uh, last week after the session i was reading the chapter in revelation when i was reading the chapter in revelation revelation is it is about a vision of saint john and what's going to happen in the future and when i was reading about it uh, reading the word of god in revelation talks about serving god and uh, how uh uh how how things will happen in the future so that is when i was thinking of uh the holy spirit reminded me that when currently you are serving god you are doing it through prayer and you are doing it through faith if you are not doing through prayer and prayer means not like what i would do in the past just read the novenas and be hoping that it will work you are doing through faith that you are convinced that your work is being done for the kingdom of god not that you want to get blessing because you already got the blessings you are doing it for god's kingdom your commission on this earth your purpose on this earth is to do work for god's kingdom so reading the word of god studying faith is only by reading the word of god it's for me if my faith has increased so much it's by reading the word of god and listening to testimonies so we'll go to 1 john 3 17 and 18 line but who so has this world's good and sees his brother have need and shuts up his bowels of compassion from him how dwells the love of god in him my little children let us not love in word neither in tongue but in deed and in truth praise god praise god praise god as you study about the word of god you will realize how the lord is talking to you and telling you so for me to study the word of god as i studied the word of god and i saw healing and i saw uh, miracles after miracles i started sharing the word of god with people whom i knew were going through a difficult time and god was giving me the opportunity 
So as he says over here, my little children, let's not love in word. Just don't, you don't listen to the word of God and keep it in your head. Uh, I'm enjoying it for me and my uh, little family. And don't keep it only for your tongue, but do it. Do it in deed and in truth. It might, I, I know of a, I know of an experience that uh, uh, when I was helping someone in India, helping means just sharing the word of God, honestly. This particular lady had two sons and she was so disappointed. Nothing was working for the boys in terms of them to have jobs and she wanted them to go abroad. All I did was sharing the word of God, sharing testimonies and telling how, just revealing the truth about God. You know, when you reveal the truth of the word, the reveal the truth, share the word of God, you are not doing it. Holy Spirit is doing it, but Holy Spirit, because he is telling us, you have compassion. I, I had compassion. I knew what this lady was going. She was a single mother raising this, her two sons. Have compassion and that is the love of God will show. God wants to help her. God has used you as a laborer to help. You share the word of God. Share the truth. Share the testimonies are the truth. God will then intervene and God intervened in her life. One of the son went to Middle East. He's got a wonderful job in Dubai. The other son is in um, UK. He's got a wonderful job. Uh, I think he's going to finish his education and he already started working. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, that is what God helps us. One thing I realized, talent. God had always given me something of connecting people. And I can, even at work, I realize connecting people, connecting the dots, I could do it. But he, I had to do for his kingdom. And that's what God started utilizing me for doing for his kingdom. Praise God. So I never created any jobs for the boys. It was God who was doing it. But she had to know the word of God. She had to know the truth. And before, and then God commissioned me to do the next job. And I only told her, you do the same for others. You do the same for others. So she said, I hope my sons are blessed and all. I said, your sons are already blessed. You just do it for others. You will see more blessings in your son's life. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Melanie, you want to add anything over here? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Beautiful, beautiful, uh, Hilda. You know, it reminds me of what you said exactly. When you make something happen for others, God makes it happen for you. So you go out and you share the word. You have compassion for somebody and act out of that compassion because compassion will compel you to action. That's what it says in verse 18, in deed and in truth. And when you do that, God takes care of all your situations. And it's beautiful because our God is a God who cannot be outdone in generosity. That's why it says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, running over. Men shall give unto your bosom. For the measure you met shall be meted out unto you. So the measure you give shall be meted out unto you. And God multiplies it. It's not just that measure that he uses, but he multiplies it. Running over, it says. So it says here, for with the same measure that you met with all, it shall be measured to you again. That means it will come again and again to you. It's a multiplication running over. So, but you're not giving because you want to receive. You're giving because you have received the love of God. That's the difference in Christian giving. In normal giving, we give because, you know, we people give because they want to receive something in return. They want a favor. You know, when you give something in, in an olden day or in, in our previous life, we would give something to somebody in order so that, you know, they would have favor over us. But here it's totally different. You are giving because 
so much from the Lord because you know who, what you have received. And now your, his love inside of you prompts you to go and reach out to others in compassion. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Thank Jesus. You. So at the end of the day, it's always about the love of God. That's why this verse of verse in verse 17, it focuses on the on the love of God. It says, if you shut up your bowels and you see a brother in need and you do not have compassion, how can the how can you just say that the love of God is in you? Are you really are you really a person who, who has the love of God? Because the love of God inside of you will move you to compassion, and that compassion will help you to go and reach out to others in love, in deed and in truth, not just in words but in deed and in truth. There are two things that John talks about here. In deed and in truth, the truth of God's word, in obedience to God's word, maybe even going and sharing the word of God with them. That's how you reach out. And that's how you reached out to your friend, uh, Hilda, because the compassion, the love inside of you helped her, helped you to reach out to her. And now that she has been blessed, you have told her to go and reach out to other people. So it's a chain, chain effect. You know, that's how it works. The kingdom works. You know, you, you share your love with somebody. That person goes and be a blessing to somebody else. And the, and the thing continues. Isn't it so beautiful? Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. The next thing in terms of serving God is confessing the word of God. Let's go to Ephesians 6, 7 and 8 verse. Because serving God is only through faith. With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man does, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be born or free. Praise God. So you can see over here, as you confess the word of God and you meditate it, with good you'll be, with good will you are doing service. You are doing it for the Lord and not for men. So remember, whenever you, like for me, when someone thanks me that you went an extra mile, mile out of the way, I said I did it for Christ. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man does, the same he shall receive of the Lord, whether he is born or free. Sister, you can help me to translate whether he be bond or free. I forgot to uh, meditate on it. So you can help me if you understood this part. I Basically, for me, is do it for the Lord. Let's put it from the from the, the passion translation because so that we can okay. understand this was better. Okay. So yeah. see what it says. Serve your employers wholeheartedly and with love. As though you were serving Christ and not men. Be assured that anything you do that is beautiful and excellent will be repaid by our Lord. Whether you are an employee or an employer. So that is Please. what is meant by bond or free. That means whether you are working for somebody or you are an employer. You have you have employed somebody to work for you. So either way, either way, when you do anything for somebody else, which is beautiful and excellent, it will be repaid by our Lord. So say Please in an organization, God. whether you are working for someone and you are doing something with the, with the wholehearted intention that you're not serving that person, but and that's what it's talking about here. Yeah. So it, it, when you say employee and employer, it's not only talking about an organization. It can I, even be in a household, you know, because before this, when St. Paul talks, he all he talks about the relationship between um, husband and wife, between children and parents. So in any way, you know, suppose a parent is doing something, the child is doing uh, you, you know is blessing the parent in some way whatever you do when you take the approach that lord it's not me it is you and me christ in me doing the work i'm doing everything wholeheartedly not half-heartedly but wholeheartedly and with love now you will be repaid not by people maybe you will never not be repaid by people 
but you will be paid, repaid by our Lord. So the return may not be just by your employer or the person who has employed you. The return may be in any other way. You know, we do not know how it may be. It may not be immediate, it may, but it is going to come because when the seed is sown with love, there is going to be a harvest. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Sister you. Melanie. The passage translation was good. When I was preparing last week, I had put down the scripture and this week I... Uh, I didn't spend time on this scripture, but now I got the meaning of it. Anybody in the audience who are listening to it, uh, to our uh, word of God, anybody has anything to share at this point? Okay. If no one has anything to share, you can share later during um, the fellowship time. But basically, the crux of it is confess your word of God. As you speak the word of God and spend time, today I learned about something from Sister Melody Passive Translation. So, so basically, you are doing it always when you are doing anything for anyone, do it for Christ. You know, when you are repaid by Christ, don't think about the repayment also by Christ, but you are doing it out of love from God because God has given you all these resources and God is rich. You are being used as an instrument to reach out to someone. Take that opportunity. I, I can tell you for me, when I reach out to someone to help someone, I feel the kind, a sense of peace and love in me that this is my it's an attitude of gratitude. The amount that God has done for me, this is one of the least I could do for him. This is one of the least work I could do for him. The amount that he has done for me. From nothing, he made me into something. So, so that is what for me, it is more like an attitude of gratitude. And when you have that attitude of gratitude and having that attitude of thanks to him, he will repay you in kind or he will have, you know, at your most lowest point in your life, he will turn around the situation and you, you know, you might not even realize that situation was there. I, I remember for me, the situation was, I, uh, there was a time when I had my child going to the residential program and I had to go in for a biopsy. And uh, the most, the, the question that I asked the radiologist was, it was a cyst. I said, does a cyst disappear before you do the radio, before you do the biopsy? She looked at me, she said, yes, maybe that's, the radiologist must have seen this miracle with someone. So she came with the needle towards me to, um, for, uh, uh, to take that uh, fluid for the uh, biopsy and as she was watching through the ultrasound machine before she could even reach me the cyst has already disappeared praise god she looks at my face and says i don't think you need to do anything today because half 15 minutes back we had done one ultrasound it showed everything now was the law and that was with the nurse or the technician now is final the radiologist before I go for the biopsy it, before she comes to do it she sees it off the, I, I thank God because I didn't want to go through this ordeal that I could then spend time those three days with my uh, daughter before she had gone for the residential program praise God those are the things that God is doing for you that was my lowest point at that point of time so God does things for you out of the blues that you can't think of. So each and every time you help anyone, do it only for Christ. Do it for Christ and do it out of love for the, the love that you have been filled. Show the love of Christ to others. Show the love of Christ that you are doing it for Christ because you are filled with his love. Show his love to others. Help others to realize who Christ is. Praise God. 
the next is meditate on the word of god as you spend time meditating the word of god god will help you the holy spirit will help you to simplify and give you examples so let's go to james 2 verse 14 it profit my brethren do a man say he has faith and have not works can faith save him praise god when we say we love god we say we have faith we faith is what assurance of what we hope for evidence of what we cannot see we say we do that but when it comes to doing and helping someone we don't do it so how does that work that does not work right so basically as you meditate the word of god you know god will tell you to reach out to people and explain to people i have been doing this in this past one year as i got opportunities to reach out to people people not having like now currently i am helping a, a person through faith telling him how he'll get the job i keep reminding him that faith is assurance of what we hope for an evidence of what we have not seen i said that i know you can't see it but yet because we have a god we have a creator we have our lord you are going to see the job that is faith and he he never was a friend of mine because he was actually a friend of my husband and he was i i for past 18 months he did not have a job and he was feeling so bad to talk to anyone and i used to talk to him connect with him and through the word of god i have been telling him how powerful god is and one day when i was meditating on the word of god and about this friend of mine uh i was uh, and uh, uh, this friend of mine i was thinking how to help him because nothing is working for him god help me to connect to his friend also so she did not know that he did not have a job she told me oh, during this week there's someone uh, i think that position will be the right fit for him so i said praise god i i told my friend chandra that god is going to do something unbelievable for you you know as i was meditating and praying the lord helped me to reach out to a friend of ours and god is making it work through and during this experience this full journey for him he started realizing truly how god plays he said i always used to believe in god but maybe uh it has helped me to go through this situation to realize the works of god because you know when we are very successful and we are things are all working in our favor we don't know that it how it worked in our favor we all think it is oh i must be a very smart person i must be a very powerful person but and we lose sight of god and then we come through a situation in our life that i need someone to help me god is so beautiful he's loving and a forgiving god he puts a labor i told chandra maybe god put me as a laborer to reach out to you and to share his word with you and i'm so positive this year you're going to get the job in the intercessory class of sister melody we pray for you i in the uk divine retreat i pray for you and one day when i was listening on the uk divine retreat i uh, the priest said that i Uh, there are two people someone is praying god has created a job one was i knew i claimed it for you and one i claimed it for my prior manager so praise god as you meditate on god's words and and believe it in faith you will start realizing how god is going to reach out to you and talk to you and connect you to people praise god and that's how you're serving god when you're serving god you are not doing it alone he's connecting you to people to help the others praise god thank you jesus Jesus. Sister Melanie, you want to add anything? No, that's fine, Sister Hilda. You continue. Continue. So, the next thing is speak in faith to situations in life. 
in life always speak in faith don't believe that um this is a hereditary problem and um, or this is a problem that it comes genetically in the family there's nothing like that there's nothing like that when you believe in the word of god and that is hosea 4 6 i recently learned it i know we are going through a lot of word of god but as i'm spending time with the lord and i'm learning i'm sharing with you all hosea 4 6 my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou shall be no priest to me seeing thou has forgotten the law of thy god i will also forget thy children praise god so uh, my people are being destroyed for lack of knowledge so basically as a, this other sister was ministering to me actually she was ministering to another lady and i was there in that session she was telling her that you know speak in faith to situations in life don't don't believe that this has happened in my family that's why this problem has come again you know with the word of god whether it is hereditary or non hereditary or whatever is the problem with the word of god anything can be healed and cleared because as we learned during this week god wants us to have a perfect life a perfect will of god is for us to have a perfect life not just to have good experiences now be healed and fall sick again he wants us to have this perfect life to have this perfect life we have to speak in faith to situations in life and as we experience this faith and this speaking in faith to situations in our life when we encounter people who talk about their problem speak in faith to situation in life and and show them serve god by sharing your testimony and helping them and reaching out to them and telling them because that's what we are said over here my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge lack of knowledge to me is the word of god we don't have the word of god if we do not like like that other sister i told you all in india earlier about her two sons she was praying she did all her rosaries she did a novena she went to the church she went to every cross and did litanies etc etc i told her just say isaiah 452 and believe it the lord has gone before you and he has cleared the path for you you will get a job say philippians 419 so as i shared the word of god and i told the truth about the word of god she experienced it and it was she never even could comprehend in her life that her sons would have got such outstanding kind of job those were not even in her dreams that she even thought she told me that praise god her loans got cleared and they said mama now you you have done enough for us you need to take care of yourself she said i never even thought i would be having this kind of thing but you know when the lord had reached through me as a laborer reached out to me reached through me to her I knew this will happen to her because I had seen in my own life. So I helped her to speak in faith to the situation in her life. The 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 parishioner with whom I was going to the prison to share the word of God more than the prisoners because we are not getting prisoners to come to listen to the word of God because someone has at the prison cell someone has to socialize. It's, um, the reason why we are coming. god was making me to spend time with the parishioners that's why i'm having now more uh, sharing the word of god more with the parishioners than the actual ministry work and it's helping them one of the lady was at the point of giving up a job and just working in the grocery of putting food in bags and said i've given up on everything i told her no don't maybe this is why god has reached out to me and shared the word of god she got a job that she did not even realize only through the word of god and speaking faith to a situation she got a beautiful government job now so praise god then the sixth point through faith is interact with believers 
you know when you are at your down time don't go and interact with a non believer the non believer will or a pagan they'll put you further down they'll destroy for me i have a best friend whenever things and she has me as a best friend whenever things are low we both talk to each other because we will both talk you speaking faith to the situation because we know all things work together for good for those who love him and live according to his purpose just go and share god's word do his work you will see signs and wonders you'll be able to increase the uh, the the souls for the kingdom of heaven praise god praise and god. always act in faith always act in faith no matter what the situation is even if the situation is so so negative everything like this lady the other parishioner that i was talking she was so negative she wanted to stop the prison ministry anything everything and that was the last day for her it was her last day okay and that day i lord told me to ask the prison coordinator um, of our st matthew church whether i can join these two ladies so this lady any was not even talking to me and i heard her talking to the other lady dolores that she's going to stop all this because she is totally tired 18 months hers also story was 18 months not getting a job or anything and she's tired she listens that day we had only one, i think one or two prisoners in the cell she listens when i'm sharing the word of god and whatever i have learned over here and me going back to my bible and meditating on the word god holy spirit discerning she told me as we were coming out of the prison to the car to the parking lot you are the first person who made the bible so easy for me i said uh, praise god i said that and then i the, because she started talking to me i started telling her about her job i think god has created your job he has already done it for you and then we started bonding and i started texting her the word of god the next time she tells the prison coordinator she wants to go with hinda so praise god she came with me and as we started you know it was since august to september yeah and now we are in mid of october she, praise god she texts me i told her you'll text me that you have got the best job she does it praise god that she has got a government job the best job in america having a government job is one uh, when you are coming close to retirement age is the best job because you will start getting pension then so praise god god gave us something unbelievable and i i pray and thank god that she continues her work in the ministry so you act in faith and share his word with others that's all that god is asking did i what did i do some of my time but i enjoyed this time of sharing the word with others and reaching out to others nothing else other than that because god was working through me then the fourth is through your uh, through your role god speaks to you and helps you to reach to others to friends strangers prisoners non believers and i have seen that even in the assisted living god has helped me to reach out to people show love i need to spend more time but as i said i'm waiting for god to give me directions i'm not doing it with my own human capability of doing knee jerk reaction oh i have to do this to someone i have to do that i want god to put it in my mind reach out to them for the spend more time with the people in the assisted living i'll do that because i want it to come in me obeying his instruction rather than hilda doing it because hilda has to do it if hilda does it on her own i'll break down but if i do it with god god's help i'll have 100 times the energy to do not only that work to come back and do work at my own home and to be a life around people so everything i want to do it by praising thanking god and praying to god to give me that strength to reach out to people and the last thing is 
as I said, fourth was through your role that God gives you. God gave me the role of a mother. As a mother, I reached out when I used to go for um, activities of my children. Uh, through I could help some of my children's friends. Everything God was doing through my role. At work, at my role, I can... There are times that there are people in India of show that I have to connect with people on work. But when I see some people discouraged, I talk to them because they talk to me offline and I help them to share and to build your foundation on the Lord rather than building your foundation only on your job. First, you start with God and then God will help you to may strengthen your job. That's what I do that. So through my role, I have been able to help in various ways that God is asking me to do. And the last is a passion and calling. You know, if you don't get a calling from God, and as we, I think we kept, I kept saying this, and I think Sister Melanie said that too. If you don't have a calling from God and do it with your own willpower, it won't. It won't work. It has to come from the Lord. It has to come from the Lord. I repeat because when it comes from the Lord, like this lady in India, Wendy, when I was talking to her for her sons, I knew it was coming from the Lord because God was reminding me every now and then to reach out to Wendy. Now he doesn't. After Wendy's second son got the job, then I don't get those promptings in my mind to reach out to her because God said, now you, you need to reach out to someone else. Spread the word. So I knew this was finally a calling from God for me to reach out to people. So whatever I have done right now is always a calling. As you spend time with the Lord, as you spend time with His word, He will, he will help you to reach out to people. Let's go through one scripture before we end. 2 Timothy 1 to 9. Timothy chapter 1. Yeah, chapter 1. Okay. 9. Verse 9? Yeah. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Praise God. So as we end today's session, I want you all to know that the Lord paid his price for us on the cross. He saved us. He gave us salvation. He called us with an holy calling. Not according to our works. Not that there's nothing that Hilda did that he reached out to me. But there was a calling from him to help people. But because of his own purpose, he wants to, re he wants to help the people and his grace. I'm used in this process. I'm only an instrument working for the Lord, instrument of labor, which was given to us in Christ before the world began. So every time, people, when you have a calling from God to reach out to someone, you don't have to be worried, oh, it is going to take my time and energy. He will multiply the time for you. Even if one year of your time is wasted doing something, you know, God will multiply your time from second year onwards. That second year will be a, you know, think like the first year was a famine. The second year would be a feast, multiplication of feast. So when God calls you to reach out to people, whether it is relatives, whether it is family, friends, believers, non-believers, the poor, the needy, and he keeps reminding you again and again, there were people whom I didn't even know at the church. And God kept reminding me to help this person, help that person. And I would go and connect with those people, talk to those people. And then as soon as I, God 
had fulfilled the promise of them and me as an instrument working through them you know i wouldn't be reminded any more i would just smile at the person wave and say hello go to the next person i started realizing now that i am in the word of god that was a calling from god from me to connect with people and do and his grace he's helping them and me as an instrument sharing the word and um uh, being uh, a a resource for god to help him to serve his purpose and his grace and his love to everyone here on this earth praise god thank you jesus thank amen jesus. amen 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 sister melanie you want to say anything before we have the closing prayer i think it's beautiful what you shared hilda our scripture i think sums it all up it was not we who chose god but it is he who chose us and appointed us to go and bear fruit fruit that will last so when the calling comes from him he is the one who equips us he is the one who gives us the strength that's why it is according to his purpose and according to his grace which was given us in christ jesus even before the world began just this just you know harmonizes with the scripture so it says that we were chosen in christ jesus the foundation of the world he chose us and because he chose us it's the holy spirit in us that is working in us through us and that is why we have to every moment depend on the holy spirit because without the holy spirit you know we'll be like those noisy gongs or clanging signal symbols just doing blah 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 but with the spirit of god inside of us the love of god motivating us now we can go about and make a difference in the life of others praise god thank you jesus god. Thank and i like jesus. what you said hilda it's like you know when you give somebody many times we want to be connected to a person and then they kind of depend on us and uh, we become like you know they are they are whatever they are go to person but we should need to always point them to god that's what when you did with your friend wendy you pointed her to jesus you pointed her to the word so that now you could withdraw and she could be fending on her own and she she has seen the power of the word so now she's in a position that you know she knows she knows who she has she doesn't need to be dependent on you so we don't only give people fish but we teach them to fish and that's so important in god's kingdom so that they do not become dependent on us but they become dependent on god praise god praise god praise god thank you jesus and then once you're you, finished with that person you move on to somebody else because there's maybe so many people out there who are waiting you know to to know the truth to understand the word to get a encouraging word so that they will be lifted up from their situation and that's what god wants us to do praise god thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus anyone wants to say the closing prayer yes sister lila yes sister lila yes go ahead sister junita our father we thank you for giving us this opportunity to come before you and listen to your word now. thank you father for this word that has come to the helping of us lord thank you father for blessing us lord with that with the loving months a few months of past now lord and we are in the beginning of the loving part father we thank you for protecting us giving us guiding us and working with us during the time all these months that have passed and now as we are coming closer to the year end we pray that you will be with us especially uh, with my family my brothers sisters all of us lord we thank and praise you in from the bottom of our hearts for telling protecting us and giving us the grace and peace and joy that no man can give, Lord. It will be you, Lord Jesus, who will reach out to us from the time we came into this world to till today, Lord. We give you the thanks, we give you the glory, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for 
if it has more more in depth of, the, of your word or Jesus, your word which is so true and perfect or the truth that we believe in today Lord. And thank you Lord for uh, the unsaved loved ones Lord in our family Lord. We pray for their salvation Lord. That they will come to the knowledge of the truth that they have to hear the living God. It's not a dead God that we pray to. We pray to a living and true God. Yes, Father, we thank you for those in our families who are not saved, Lord, that you would open their eyes of understanding to come to the knowledge of the truth before it's too late, Lord. We protect each and every one of our families from the snares of the enemy and from the bonds, uh, from the evil world, Lord. The world which is full of evil, Lord Jesus. So we are in this world, Lord. We have to be of this world, Lord, because we are set apart from for your glory, for your work, Lord Jesus, on this earth, Lord. Let us be an example that the pillars share, Lord Jesus, to reach out to people who are going through a lot of things, Lord. At times, yeah, people are difficult, but still, Lord, we need to reach out to them, Lord, and to save souls, Lord. As much as we can while we are on this earth, Lord. We thank you for the word that has come through. We pray that you give us more and more of your word, Lord, each day. And renew our minds, Lord, in every area of our lives, Lord, to cleanse ourselves, our minds, our hearts, and to be pure, holy, Lord, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. In your sight. We thank you, Lord, for the Sahira and all the work that she is doing, Lord. And she reaches out to more people, Lord. Bless uh, uh, Vincent and Melanie and everyone here gathered on this platform, Lord. We thank you and praise you and give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Jonita.